Okay guys, in this video lesson we're going to take a look at solubility uh, as another property that is kind of determined by IMF and kind of what it is. So first thing we want to talk about is this concept that if we want to have two substances that mix together or physically dissolve into each other, okay, so think of like salt in water or think of like ethanol into water or like Kool-Aid or anything, or sugar, any of that kind of stuff that you dissolve into water. Um, that doesn't happen universally. There are some things that can dissolve in water, some things that can't, okay? So what it comes down to solubility or the ability to dissolve comes down to actually IMF, okay? So what we say is like dissolves like. It's the phrase that we use to kind of remind ourselves that you need to have like polarities, meaning like intermolecular forces for things to dissolve into each other. So if you are a polar substance or an ionic substance, you can dissolve into other polar things and other ionic things. Um, that is because they use ion dipole, 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 or hydrogen bonding as their intermolecular forces or their intermolecular interactions. All of these things rely on a charge imbalance. So they're basically the similar or they are like to each other. Okay. Now, if you are nonpolar, you only have little dispersion forces. So when you are nonpolar, you do not get to dissolve or mix with other things that are polar. Okay, so our like refers back to polarity and IMF, but we, we group hydrogen bonding, dipole, dipole, and ion dipole together as one kind of category here. Okay, so here we have three images. Here's just an example of gasoline. Gasoline is actually a mixture of nonpolar things. Here we have salt in the water, which would be an example of ion dipole interactions uh, working. And here down here we have some samplings of different alcoholic beverages, which the alcoholic beverages are ethanol dissolved into water, so that would be more like your um, dipole dipole slash hydrogen bonding interactions inside them. Okay, so here's some examples for us to take a look at for this. Uh, first of all, what happens when we try to put water and ethanol together? Okay, are they going to be soluble or will they mix together? Okay, so to do that, we need to look at their polarity and their IMF. So both are polar. Okay, so if you look them up or draw them or take a look at those molecules, they're both polar molecules, which means they both contribute to dipole dipole forces. Now, actually, they're both hydrogen bonding here. But for our purposes, for solubility, it doesn't matter if it's a hydrogen bond or not because they are classified the same. So because they both have dipole-dipole forces, they should mix together. So if you take water and take ethanol and put the two together, you should get a mixture of the two things that stays in one phase or looks like one layer of stuff. Okay, We call that being in a single phase of our solutions. Okay, So you could mix this and they shouldn't separate out. You shouldn't see layers start to separate out with these. Now, if we do the exact same thing to water and cyclohexane, okay, here we look and water is definitely a polar substance. It's got negative charge and positive side to it. But cyclohexane is a, is a cyclic molecule that's nonpolar. So there isn't a positive side or a negative side. So as a result, when you mix the two together, if you shake them up and mix them together, they're going to slowly start to separate out and form two distinct layers inside any type of mixture. They will not dissolve into each other. They will not mix. Okay, And the reason is pretty straightforward actually. The water attracts itself. Because of the positive and negatives, the water is attracting to water. It's not attracting to the cyclohexane. So it's not a fact that they just they don't want to mix because they don't like each other. It's a fact that the water wants to hold on to itself. It wants to attract to other negative things and positive things. So as it does that, it essentially squeezes out the cyclohexane or pushes it off to the side. Okay. So as the water is regrouping and rebonding with itself, reforming those hydrogen bonds, it's actually squeezing the cyclohexane and pushing it off. And then what ends up happening is we have two completely separate different layers that form when you have a nonpolar thing trying to mix with a polar substance. Okay. Third example, uh, what happens when you take water in an ionic compound like salt? Okay. In this case, the water has really strong hydrogen bonds, so it's going to pull on the different ions inside this solid. What's going to happen is this ionic crystal lattice, if it's weak enough, will break apart, and the water molecules will actually be able to encapsulate or dissolve the different ions. So this is going to create those ion dipole interactions that we've talked about before, where the water surrounds the different ions within that salt. Now, not all salts are soluble. In our upcoming unit on solubility, we'll spend some time talking about how we determine if a salt can dissolve or not. Um, but for our purposes now, it has the ability to do that as long as the water is strong enough to break apart this crystal lattice and form these ion dipole interactions. Okay? All right, guys, that is it.